In this tutorial, we're going to focus on two things. One is we're going to learn how to build interactive content using PowerPoint. And the second part is that we're going to learn how to work with the slide properties in Articulate Presenter 360. So let's think about our interactive content. So in this practice file here, what we have is a start slide. And I've got three icons, and I want to click on an icon and go to its respective slide. So, for example, if I click on Notebook, I want to go to the Notebook slide. If I click on Clipboard, I want to go to the Clipboard slide, and so forth. Now, what I want to do is create an interaction that kind of makes sense. So, by default, the interaction is going to be linear. Or these PowerPoint slides are going to be linear. This is slide one. If I click the next button, it's going to go to slide two. If I click the next button, it's going to go to slide three. Well, I don't want that. What I want to do is I want to click on this. I get to Notebook. I don't want to have a Next button. I only want to have a Previous button that takes me back to the main menu. And then I want to click the Next button on my main menu and have that take me to my End menu. So essentially I want to bridge over these. And the only way I can access these slides is by clicking on the links on these icons. So let's go ahead and build the interactive part first. And then we'll go into Slide Properties and actually work on the way the player works with the slides. So let's look at our first slide. First thing we want to do to build an interaction is we just need to have hyperlinks on these objects to their respective slides. So if I select my notebook, I can right click and I can choose Hyperlink and add it that way. Or you can hit Control K and that opens up your hyperlink window. In this case, we want to link to a place in this document. And then the notebook should link to notebook. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. We're going to select the clipboard, Control K. Clipboard should go to clipboard. And then we'll do the same thing for the map, Control K. And then the map goes to map. So now if we preview this and just using the reading pane, I can see when I click on this, it should go to the notebook. I'm going to hit home. I can click on this, this should go to the clipboard. And I can click on this, and that should go to the map. So we know the interaction itself is working the way it should work. And when we publish it, we know it's going to work. Now, this is where Presenter 360 comes in handy because by default, PowerPoint's linear. And what we're doing is we're building an interaction, and we need to jump over these slides. So we want these slides to kind of be hidden. And the only way you can access them is by clicking on the hyperlinks. And if you click the Next and Previous buttons, we want to control where those go. So let's go ahead and open up the Slide Properties. The Slide Properties are going to show you all your slides, and then you can see the way the properties are set on there. So how is it advancing? Is it going to advance automatically? You know, if you have presenters, we're not going to worry about that, or a playlist. And then here's where we're going to focus most of our attention is uh, what do we want the branching to be when you click the Previous and Next buttons, and then what controls do we want to show. So we're just going to go ahead and keep this kind of simple. So first thing we want is all of these to advance by user. And I can click on these individually and just click on by user here, right? So you can see how that works. Or I can come over here and click on this on the side. The other thing is I can select all the slides. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all the slides. And then I can say I want those to advance by user. And you can see that it changed them across the board. So we can do it slide by slide or you do them as a group. Now this one, let's think about what we want. We have hyperlinks for the icons, so we want those to go to the slides. What do we want for the player? In this case, I don't want the Next button to go to the Notebook. I actually want Next button to go down to the end. So we're going to skip all of these slides in between. So we're just going to go to the controls here where it says Next button. And let's say we want the Next button to go to the end. And then that works exactly like we want it. Notebook, what we want to do here is these three are in the middle. What we want is no Next buttons. So I'm going to select all three of them and just hit the Control key and select them. So I got them all three selected. And I'm going to turn off the Next button. So the Next button is gone, and they're only going to have Previous buttons. And the Previous buttons, I want all of those to come back to the Start menu here. So we just click Previous, and we'll select Start. So if we look at it, there's no Next button. And the Previous 
is going to start. We hit OK. We'll preview the range of slides. Let's go ahead and preview all of them. Hit OK. All right, so the slides don't auto advance. So that's the first thing we notice, right? So they're not auto advancing. When I click Next, that should actually come to the end. We're going to click Next, and you can see it jumped to the end. So that's working right. We need to set Previous to actually go back automatically. So we'll do that. And now if I click on Notebook, you can see there's only a Previous button. When I click on it, it takes me back to the main menu. So the only way I'm going to be able to get to these slides is if I click on the icons. If I don't click on the icons, I'm going to skip over them. Now the other thing I can do is go into the player and hide these slides, which is what we'll do in the next tutorial. But the main point is that you can use the hyperlinking capabilities inside of PowerPoint to jump to different slides. And because you're doing that, you can go into Slide Properties and modify how the player is working with the slide. So that's how you would create interactions and branched activities. So just go ahead and go back into the Slide Properties. We're going to close this. Let's come to Slide Properties. So one of the things we know is at the end, the logic of it is if I'm clicking Slide 1 and I click Next button, it's going to actually take me to Slide 5. So when I hit the Previous button, I actually want to hard code that. So I want that to come back to Slide 1. So then it's kind of jumping over. So slide one is going to jump to five, five is going to jump to one. And the only way I can get two, three, and four is by being in slide one and actually clicking on the interactions. And then two, three, and four, they don't have next buttons, they only have previous buttons. So I can view it and then I can come back. And when I'm done viewing it, I just go to the next slide. So pretty simple. Uh, the other thing you have in your slide properties is that you can determine at the slide level what you want on the different menus. For example, you may have a glossary, but you only want it available on the main slide, so you can turn it on on one slide only. And so you have these different features here that are part of your player, and we'll look at customizing the player in the other tutorial. And then you can turn the features on and off specific to the slide so they don't have to be available on every single slide. So go ahead and practice playing around with this demo file and creating the branched interaction. And then modify the slide properties and see how that works for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump in the community and ask. And then we'll watch the other tutorials to learn more about Articulate Presenter 360, especially the tutorial that deals with customizing the player.